Hey, Vlad here from DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video in the book review series. Today we're talking about Scala with cats, cats being a pun on category theory. Let me say this right out of the bat. This book is one of the easiest programming books to recommend that I've ever read. It's short, it's practical, and it's gonna make you feel good. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, and it's totally free. Sorry, couldn't resist mentioning it. Scala with Cats came out in 2017 and it's written by Noel Welsh and Dave Garnell who published several free books together under the underscore.io umbrella. I'm recording this video in the middle of October 21 and currently the second edition of the book is in the works. We should not stop you from getting the first version because it's still useful and it's still free. Honestly, Scala with Cats is probably one of the biggest contributing factors to bringing functional programming in Scala to the masses. As already mentioned, it's a super approachable and very practical book. It's around 300 pages long with illustrations of adorable cats here and there. It's divided into three parts and 22 chapters in total depending on how you count them. Scala with cats doesn't waste any time introducing you to Scala. The only two features are explained are the ones that are most commonly used in most functional programming in Scala. These are implicits and type classes. Right after that we see a couple of examples of type classes in cats plus a couple of pages dedicated to variants, a topic that can be tricky to wrap your head around. Now that we're at page 35, all warmed up, we get introduced to the core type classes in cats functor hierarchy. We're talking about functors, applicatives, monad, monotransformers, semigruples, applicatives, foldable, and traverse. One important thing to note is that no Mexican cuisine was involved in creation of this book. All explanations are kept very practical. A monad is just an interface with flat map on it. Now get on with your life. The second part of the book takes you on a tour of four case studies, testing asynchronous code, map reduce, data validation, and commutative replicated data types, aka CRDTs. The third and last part of the book are the solutions to the exercises that are sprinkled throughout the entire book. If you don't count the chapters within this part, then you will end up with only 11 chapters instead of the 22 that I mentioned in the beginning of this review. That's pretty much all there is to know about the content of the book except for the fact that the first edition covers CATS 1 and the second edition is going to cover CATS 2. In particular, every Everyone seems to be excited about the parallel type class. Also, I'm sure that it is going to cover Scala 3 as well. What I really liked about this book is how practical it was. If you're someone who already has a little bit of Scala under your belt, and you get a new job and they use cats and you've never used cats before, get this book ASAP. If you've seen my previous review of the red book, in there I mentioned that there are other books that are more practical than the red book. Scala with Cats is one of them. It sort of feels like a crash course to cats. The next thing that I'm going to say is going to be a little bit controversial. On one hand, I really liked how the book made me feel when I was reading it. Now, since at the time I was already pretty comfortable with functional programming, please take the following with a grain of salt. It felt easy in both good and a bad way. Really, it made me feel like I knew functional programming after finishing reading it. It felt like some heavy weight was lifted off my shoulders. It gave me this almost junior style confidence, this arrogant feeling of expertise. It was hard to resist writing a blog post about monads after this one, let me tell you that. Now, on the other hand, and I'm being a little bit too harsh, but hear me out. Simplicity is a two-edged sword. It's actually very hard to explain. See, as a teacher, you kind of choose your own style. And the style that I like to choose is the one that leaves no stone unturned. However, at the same time, I'm only showing you the door and you still have to go through it. You still have to put in the work. So you still need to know that there is something that you don't know. But when I read Scala with Cats, I felt like, how do I even say this? I felt like being cheated on. It's very hard to explain because I'm talking about feelings. I was like, really? That's it? For instance, I didn't really, really feel inside that I understood what functors or monads were because the explanations were kept very, very practical. So the book is a little bit unbalanced. It's very heavy on the practical side, which is both a good and a bad thing. Please know that I'm not saying that you need to understand category theory to program functionally. Quite contrary, in fact. All I'm saying is that me personally, at the time, I was hoping for something like that. My intention here is not to discourage you from reading this book. In fact, I give it a 9.5 out of 10, and as already mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is one of the easiest books to recommend. If you want to get into cats, don't even read the docs. Just get this book. It's free. Also, I have 
a couple of introductory videos to cats as well if you're interested. That's all I have for you today. Definitely grab this book and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and let's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.